We're just gonna go burp and jump the car. Ta-da. My dream growing up was always to see the General Lee fly. Now I knew Bo, Luke, and Daisy were, were not the people jumping the cars. I had enough knowledge to know they were, they were stuntmen, and this all goes back to the Hollywood star cars of the 70s and 80s that were drastically more uh, impressive than Transformers. But the General Lee became an obsession for me to not only build one and, and, and become friends with not just Bo, Luke, and Daisy, Kathy, John, and Tom, but the stuntmen, Al Wyatt Jr., Henry Kenji, Corey Eubanks, uh, just all these amazing stuntmen that went on from Knight Rider to Dukes of Hazzard to Fall Guy to all these shows that had television star cars. The General Lee received more fan mail than any of the actors on the show to the point of where Warner Brothers started sending out little cards and instead of them saying like, uh, you know, to Billy, you know, love the General Lee, they had a tire mark on it and that was the General Lee's autograph. They're valuable, but you can still find the little General Lee postcards that Warner Brothers would ship out. After putting on what became Duke's Fest now, back in 2001 and two, uh, I did a thing called the North American General Lee Fan Club Convention. And for some reason, my little house in Indianapolis was the mecca of the Dukes of Hazard, which makes absolutely no sense. But I would chase down the stuntmen and talk to them and the special effects guys. And in the later seasons of the Dukes of Hazzard, they were jumping miniatures. It wasn't the best thing you've ever seen, but someone had to make that. And Jack Sessoms was a huge miniature guy, and I chased him down. Knocked on his door in Redlands, California. He's like, you're here for what? And I'm like, the Dukes of Hazzard. My goal was to make the General Lee fly. And like I said, we did a convention in 2001, 2002, and I didn't fly out Bo, Luke, and Daisy, and, I, and we did it at Ben Jones's place at Cooters in, in Sabariville, Virginia. But the original mechanics were, were Tom Sermento, Ritz Septon, and A.J. Thrasher, and they built all these General Lees. And they had all these amazing stories on everything that ever took place on, to build cars, making them fly, because Dodge never built an airplane. And any car, like the, the General Lee, the 69 Dodge Charger, and 68 and 70, for that matter, are all unibody cars. So whenever they're two or three feet off the ground, they're gone, that's over with. So they destroyed 321 Dodge Chargers to play one General Lee for seven seasons of the Dukes of Hazard. But you can double that number in police cars because on any given time, Roscoe would run into Edenus, we'd run into Cletus and we'd be down three police cars and they'd go get, go get me three more. I wanted to see the car fly. It was never really my idea. I just was like, all right, whatever. So Rich Septon, one of the mechanics on the Dukes of Hazard, I flew him out to one of the conventions and he flew home with Corey Eubanks sitting next to him on the flight. And he called me and he's like, Travis, you screwed up. And Rich always liked to pull my leg. I was like, man, did you have a terrible flight? I had no idea why he was so upset with me. And he said, you, you sat me next to Corey on the plane. I'm like, oh man, this guy got body odor. I mean, like, what's the matter with Corey? Corey's cool. His dad's Bob Eubanks from the newlywed gate. He said, we want to jump a car. We started talking about it all the way home. He said, if you get a car, we'll jump it. And I'm like going, where do you begin? This is a semi-difficult vehicle to find, a 1969 Dodge Charger. Who's gonna let us jump a car? Uh, there's two brothers in Washington state that donated a 68 Dodge Charger. They painted it and everything. Anytime you see a car on two wheels, that's called ski in a car, it's one of the Smith brothers. They've gone on to, they were obsessed with the Dukes of Hazard also as children and now they've turned into stuntmen themselves, or at least Jamie has. Donated this car, brought it all, running and driving, had more Bondo than your local body shop in it, but we were gonna destroy it anyhow. Cut the 68 taillights, put 69s on it. I decaled it up, it looked like the General Lee. It's the General Lee. We are going to destroy this car. So uh, we shipped it down to uh, another mechanic in North Carolina. He put the roll cages in it. For good measure, any time there was a bad guy in Hazard County, he was always driving the, a four-door Malibu for some reason. I have no idea why all the bad guys like four-door Malibus. So we bought a four-door Malibu, roll caged it, bought two police cars, roll caged those. So we had a Hazard County cop car, Chickasaw cop car, of course, a four-door Malibu, and then General Lee. We just needed the place to do all this stuff at. So I approached the city of Covington, Georgia, where the first five episodes of the Dukes of Hazard were filmed. And I'm like, oh, I'm, you know, it's going to bring all this money to Covington. And all I want to do, I just need a place to jump the car because that's where the original jump happened. Saturday, November 11th, 1978 at Oxford College in front of Seney Hall. 
they jumped to General Lee on Veterans Day because they knew the dean of students were gonna be, was going to be away that day, and they knew that they can get. They said they told this, the college they were just going to do some hard driving around campus, and all these college students woke up to a 69 Charger jumping in front of the dean's office, basically. So I said to the Chamber of Commerce, I said, please let me jump a car down here in Covington, Georgia. And they, I mean, they're fam- famous for in the heat of the night, um, a bunch of other things. That in the Cannonball Run, they landed the airplane on the same square that is Hazard Square. It's the same place. I was passed off to a couple people like this crazy Yankee is down here to jump a car. Um, who can take care of him? So there was one really super great guy for the Parks Department, and they had a place called Soldier Field in Covington, Georgia. And this is basically softball diamonds is what it is. So they said, if you get all the permission and permits and everything you need and rent the field, you can jump the car. And I mean, that's a green light. It's like someone has given us a green light to put a 69 Dodge Charger in the air. And I, you know, express that we're going to bring all the right stuntmen and all this stuff and this, that, and other. And I went home like, how on God's green earth are we going to do this stuff? The big thing he said is you need insurance. Where do you go? to get insurance to jump a 69 Dodge Charger. So, of course, everyone said no, but the Lloyds of London said yes. And for that day, to jump the General Lee, and I'm flying all the, we flew in seven stuntmen, all the original mechanics that built the car, built the ramp, had soldier field and everything. For 24 hours, I had $4.5 million in insurance to jump one car. When I was doing all of the press junkets for this thing, or, or press releases, I was doing all these press releases, I was faxing press releases from my apartment that this was going to happen. And we're talking about caller IDs that weren't involved in the phone, and, and like it was like a box. And so I got a call in my office that day prior to all this happening, and it said Warner Brothers on it. And I'm like, oh my God, I've got all this money and all this stuff and insurance and I'm approved and everything and we're going to get shut down because we are jumping their car. Note to self, you can't copyright a name unless it is your name. You can't copyright a flag. You can't copyright a number. And Dodge owns the rights to the Charger. So the Charger, the 01, the flag, and the General Lee is all somebody else's stuff. So I'm sitting there going, okay, Warner Brothers can't say anything about this. So I'm... I answer the phone. Gentleman says, uh, Travis Bell. And I said, yes. He said, uh, Greg Silverman's office. And I said, yes. He said, hold for Mr. Silverman. And I go, oh, man. I'm like, all right. He said, Mr. Bell, uh, you know, my name's Greg Silverman. He said, uh, your event coming up. And I said, yeah, in like three weeks. Like, there's no way we can shut this down. What do you expect? And I said, I don't know. I expect 200 to 5,000 people. I don't know how many people are going to show up. I'm faxing press releases from my apartment. And this is pre-Facebook stuff. Like this is a website and message boards. He said, well, I'm kicking around an idea for a Dukes of Hazard movie, but I may come down there or send some people down there, but you won't know I'm there. And I said, all right. So I woke up that morning and had been down there for a week and getting all the plan and putting all these Jersey barriers up and all this stuff. So if the car decided to careen off, I didn't kill everybody in the field that day. And it was raining sideways that morning. And I'm talking hard Georgia rain. I have $4.5 million and this car has to fly today. We got out to Soldier Field and it was soggy. There was a line of people like ready to get in. I had to hire some some local police officers, super great people in Covington. And, uh, but of course they're used to, they're the Hollywood South. They're used to everything coming down there. And one of the, he could tell the police officer, I was like pacing and he's like, give it a second. It'll probably stop raining about 12 and... What time you jump in this car? I said, two. He said, you're good. 12 rolls around, sunny, beautiful out, dries up. With one of the police cars, one of the greatest veteran stuntmen, his name is Al White Jr., and he's a blonde guy who would double Bo Duke, John Schneider. He said, Travis, I'm going to barrel roll this police car before you jump. And they built a pipe ramp and full roll cage, and he's in there. And so, you know, they had this little, little bad guy chase and whatever else. And, of course, Roscoe's car goes this way, and the Chickasaw car... Green and white car, he barrel rolls it, lands on all four wheels. And of course, all the stuntmen run over and give them a thumbs up and he's fine. They pull him out and they drop him on the ground, you know, because they're, they're the fraternity of lunatics in themselves. He walked over and he said, Travis, that's the last stunt I'm ever going to do. I really don't know if he was in good health or, or not, but he wanted to do it one more time. And so the final stunt that this, if his long storied career, 
He barreled a car for a disc jockey from Indianapolis in Covington, Georgia, with a bunch of his friends in front of 5,000 of his closest friends that he just met. That car barrel rolls, and it's starting to dry up, and now it's time to jump the General Lee. Everything that I've waited since January 26, 1979 is about to happen. I borrowed a microphone and a speaker so I could talk to these people so some idiot didn't run out in front of the car, and they had backed the General Lee up all the way down this side street, and they didn't have keys to the gate that they brought the car in, so they cut it with uh, bolt cutters to open the gate. And they put the ramp about 80 feet away from the gate, and we parked the bad guy car down there and then the, the other Roscoe police car because if the General Lee landed and went out of control, they were going to ram it with one of the cars. We were jumping over the same police car that the first General Lee jumped over. We put the police car into position, which was Roscoe's very first police car ever here. So this is a Dukes of Hazard relic that I'm about to jump over in a car that's full of Bondo in a softball diamond with 5,000 people on both sides and it's wet and it's not good. So they back the car all the way up. They let it rip. Uh, car comes down the street. It comes into the field and it recoils pretty hard because it came in off the street pretty hard, but it recoiled as it hit the ramp and the rear end comes over. And Corey, he's coming in hot and it went airborne. 181 feet later, it lands on its nose because we didn't put any weight in the trunk because we were just gonna go and jump the car. Ta-da! You know, we jumped over Roscoe's original police car. It's priceless. It's a Dukes of Hazard relic to everybody here. And Corey lands nose first. And then it goes end over end. And then it's now it's facing in the air the wrong way. And both of these cars are coming at it to ram it because we don't know where there's, there's a fence coming up and we're on wet grass with a car sliding out of control. It landed on all four wheels, slid backwards, stopped, and he got out. And there's a video of me like running after it with my hands in the air because I'm like going, oh, what did I just see? And from my position, it's going toward the crowd. He gets out and he goes, I cleared the cop car. And I'm like, oh, like, yeah, you did. All of these Dukes festivals and all of these people that that now jump cars and and, and all these other people that, that risk their lives and, and do some pretty cool stuff, it all started... That car had not been in the air since 1984. And that day in 2003, we made history with the 25th anniversary flight of the General Lee. Needless to say, the car was in pieces and there's the puncture of the gas tank and the course of firemen are over there putting out or spraying it down. And I'm like going, this thing is a disaster. Like it was as big as a Chevette by the time we were done. It was bad, bad, bad. But of course, we didn't expect it to survive. We just didn't expect it to be that bad. There was probably about 100 General Lees down there to see this in a big festival, and they went all on to Covington Square. I took the car to the police station, what was left of the car, on the back of a flatbed because people were picking parts off of it because it's the 25th and it's Dukes of Hazard history. And I got back, and it was just me and this soldier field, and it was quiet, and that was it. And my daughter was very young at the time, and my mom and dad gave her a choice. And they said, do you want to go to Disneyland with Grandpa and Grandpa, or do you want to go watch Dad jump the General Lee? And my daughter had lived with the General Lee her whole life, like it was just a member of the family. So of course she didn't choose the General Lee, she chose go to Disney World. So I called my mom, and I'm sitting there going, we did it, you know, we, we did it. She's like, what? And I go, we jumped the car, and she goes, Oh, yeah. And I'm like, yeah. She goes, and then I just started crying like a baby and I could not stop. I'm like, all these years, put it, yeah, and then it was raining and oh my God. And then the cops stopped the road and, and then it was over and everything. And it was just quiet and all this work. We went back and that car was sold. We sold it to a collector, but everything beyond that now, it's already been done. You know, I mean, so I, I appreciate that they're still jumping cars and there's still interest in the Dukes of Hazard, And now they're jumping Trans Ams for Smoking the Bandit, fr friends and stuff like that. But uh, we were the first ones that did it. 
A watch can do a lot more than just tell time. It can make a statement to the world or show people a little bit more about who you want to be. Vincero offers an awesome line of designer watches at a great value that you can check out today at the link in the description below. You can also use the code VINWIKI for a discount at checkout. So be sure to check them out and thank them for their support of the channel and find your next watch. It might start a great conversation, turn some heads, or who knows, lead to your next great story.